Hello and welcome back to Lawrence Place Bacterio Space Exploration. For today's episode, I've gone through and I've um, built up the um, astronomic sciences for both Tier 1 and 2, or at least the, um, the catalogues parts of those. So as you can see from this diagram, essentially the first two tiers, which is as far as I've got so far, ignore the, we can ignore the bottom half of this for now, um, all work in more or less the same way. You've got the various different plates that are being made, and then they're exposed to various different types of types of light, types of electromagnetic radiation, uh, and that makes that makes the science that makes the um, that makes the data cards out. No, sorry, that makes exposed plates, which you can then turn into the data cards, which you can then turn into the catalogues. Although there is also the slight complication of having to do the um, the the what are those ones called? The ones in the middle. The astrome astrometric data as well. Um, those are made by combining lots of different types of cards. And so we've got all of that working working away down here. Um, this is more or less my standard setup now for doing for doing these science packs. So we've got a little power station at the top here, and this can be expanded as necessary. And at the moment, that's very very not necessary. I think some part of this is probably ground to a halt, and we'll have to have, have a look at, at that and see why. Then there's a big area of producing the coolant and the various different temperatures of coolant. So bringing in the warm stuff by by train from my supplies over to over to the west or space west, whatever we whatever we're calling that. Turn it, chilling that down here into the uh, into the cool stuff, then into cold and into super chilled down here, super cooled, sorry. Um, and, th and so we've got the the various tiers of machines here with with tanks and stuff in place to make sure that there's always room for anything to flow back up the pipes if necessary. And but also there's there's always going to be plenty in these tanks ready to be pumped down and used as, as required. And it turns out that the Astro Science requires a lot of cooling, which is why there's a huge number of um, of these coolers here, especially compared to the number I had up here for the um, for the Energy Science, which is much less demanding on the coolant front. So as you can see, we've still got enough of that enough of it down here. These are all basically full, um, even though I've got so many fewer tanks, uh, so many fewer coolers. So down here, we've then got. We're importing again the same sort of drop-off station here, where we're bringing in up to six different solid supplies and then putting them onto belts, which are then busted down, as as, as is always the, the way with these sort of systems. I'm turning the beryllium into from from ingots into plates here on site because it's a bit more compact that way to bring it in. And to be honest, we don't actually need it for all that much stuff um, yet. We've then got these three machines that are making the uh, the slides. What do we actually call them? We actually call them blank observation frames. Okay, so we're making the blank observation frames here for the for the processes, and they get used up by basically everything from here on downwards. So we're turning those into, and then down here we've got um, what we've got infrared visible, visible, and presumably UV observation frames being made here. They're all being passed down, and we've got microwave and X-ray. Yes, microwave and X-ray here be also being added, put together, and then these those are all being t so these are all going through the various different types of telescopes. We've got optical telescopes here that just scan back and forth and look at the look at the sky, uh, the radio telescopes for the microwave, and then one of these sorts of telescopes for X-ray, and then we're, we're using these orrery type machines. We're converting those um, those exposed cards along with memory cards into the actual data cards that can be turned into the science. Now, there's a bit of a problem here with my uh, memory card production. That needs to be boosted, and I think I'm running low on supplies for that. So that's something else I'm going to need to look at. But we'll uh, we'll get to that in a bit. But then we've got down here. We've got all the different types of um, astromet astrometrics facilities for turning for creating creating the data cards. Um, and then here we've got this one is taking in as I as I mentioned. Uh, I think I, I talked about this in the previous episode. If we make these out of five different types of um, data cards, then we make about twice as many per per input card. So much, much more efficient. So we're doing that just because it's well, it's better. This all gets passed down here. Um, oh, these are doing the same sort of things for the various, and then these are producing the uh, gravitational yeah, gravitational lending data. So we we put in astronomic data and. That somehow gets turned into a different type of data, and here we're pummeling it with lasers to find out what happens. Gravity wave data, to make, pummeling it with lasers to get the gravity wave data out, and all of that then gets passed down to these supercomputers, which are then turning it into the Astro Catalog One, like that, and then down here the Astro Catalogs Two, except we've run out of one of these, which is um, this one. Yeah, so so up here we've run out of one of the types of. Um, 
types of data cards, and that's because we've run out of memory cards on the input here. So, so that's expected, not good, but expected. So, when those start to flow again, we'll get the we'll get the catalog part um, tier two is being passed through, and then these come along to a station here. And because of the way I've, I've set this up, I've got it in a sort of a a long column sort of situation with all of the all of the uh, <clears throat> all of the telescope stuff happening, then all of the analysing of those data cards. And then we move on to the computer. So I've got both sets of computers together. I put these two stations together as well. So we've got here we've got uh, tier tier one on this side, tier two on this side, and we've got three and a half thousand there and six hundred there. And then I can send trains along here to grab them and take them off to my science area. So that's all working very nice. Well, it's all working very nicely except for the problem up here. Oh yes, this is another thing I've done. I've moved the production of memory cards from where it was down here on this area of um, scaffolding up to here because I hadn't planned ahead enough. I hadn't left room for expansion. This, basically, this, this spaceport gets in the way, so I wasn't able to expand my uh, recycling facilities out here and my um, one of the... There was an overlap between two of the two of the um, layers of machines, so I think I couldn't couldn't basically couldn't do this. So now that I've moved it up here, there's a bit more room to play with, as you can see. So this is all, all now working nicely, except that we've run out of the, uh, the the memory card substrate on the input here. There's probably a few of them left in the station over here. In fact, there aren't even. They're, this is completely empty. It's been picked 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 absolutely bare by the by the trains. So there's absolutely nothing available up here. So this area has gone to sleep, which is why we don't have any memory cards being taken off to all the other stations that require them. And there's actually, there's still 1800 here. Maybe I should... Let's send a train round manually to go up there and... Are you the right sort of train? You're the right sort of train. Go to... Um, mem card pick up. Wait for, I don't know, a minute. That'll do. Nice. Uh, try again. There we go. And then go to, what was it? It was Astronomic Science drop-off, wasn't it? So we want Astro Stuff drop-off for Science. No, not Science. No, not that one. Astro Supplies drop-off. And wait there until empty. So that'll at least give it a kick and get it, get it, get it to start working again with another 1,800 cards. But 1,800 cards is only, well, we'll see when this fills up. But it's not an, in, it's not an enormous number of these memory cards, unfortunately. But it will mostly fill the train. Okay, that, that's going to be that's going to give it a good a good kick to get it get it running again. So the reason I'm having problems with that is if we look down here on Norvis, we've got this rather slow trickle of these substrates coming through. Because whilst I've got quite a lot of machines here, they're all productivity moduled up the wazoo, which means they're all taking um, they're all running at a quarter um, crafting speed, and that is. Despite the appearance, the slightly weird appearance of the numbers, that is at the minus 80% of their normal speed, because their normal speed is 1.25. So they're running at minus 80%, which is as slow as they can go with uh, with these mem with these uh, productivity modules. So I've got a couple of choices here. One is just to make an enormous number more of these and stretch them way off into the distance across here. And that would work. That would be a possibility. A more efficient way of doing it would be to redesign this to use beacons and have a couple of rows of it along here, rows of them along here with beacons dotted up the middle and with those beacons I would then be able to do essentially what I've done down way down here where I'm making the uh, the low density structures and this is the sort of system I, I would be I, I'd go for uh, with the module with the beacons in the middle packed with speed modules and product and efficiency modules and that means that in, instead of being on as they were on 0.25 crafting speed this brings them back up to their normal speed of 1.25 but I still get the plus 32 percent productivity bonus and it pulls the amount of power they're using down to a mere plus 280 percent that's still quite a lot <laughs> um, but that's as opposed to what are they using at the moment? Let's find out. Plus three hundred and twenty percent. Okay, so it's a, it's it brings the speed up to the to to normal, and it brings the power consumption down a little bit while still giving me the uh, productivity bonus, which is I think is is a good balance between the different different um, things I need. It will presumably produce a lot more scrap as well, but that's that's not a problem. I have facilities for dealing with that. It just gets turned back into iron and copper, so I I don't really care about that. It, it, it can just get reused. And then, hopefully, that will mean that instead of running at a quarter speed, these will run five times faster, so we'll be able to fill this rocket up at a decent rate. And to be honest, this is 
getting close to full so potentially by the end of this episode it will have launched again and we'll, and things will start running nicely i guess we'll see so let's make sure that train has has done what it was supposed to do it's either not got here yet or it's dumped all of the ah i see these machines are running again that probably means we've dropped 1800 yes we've dropped all those memory cards into the system and they're just getting eaten up really really quickly now that's the problem with um, the space sciences they use incredible quantities of um, of memory cards but, uh, and the, the reason is it's because you, you you take them in and yeah there's you fit a handful of, you fit quite a lot of them onto a, onto a, um, a bus like this they then get eaten up and it turns eventually you're turning quite a lot of memory cards into one of these uh, catalog things so each of these catalogs contains I think it's something like three or four memory cards at that point and so they get packed more and more densely the further you go on through this through the science system and so you end up just using in having enormous numbers of memory cards just tied up in all of your resources they do eventually get spat back out again when you actually make the science packs but they do but that's quite a long way further down and then they have to be recycled as well it's just it, it's quite a it's quite a memory card heavy process but I hope that this means that once I've got this whole thing running and I've saturated it with memory cards we'll find that it tends to be generally okay they'll just go round and round then and we'll, we'll, we'll have to top it up a bit yeah sure um, you get quite a few memory cards go into each science pack but hopefully there'll be enough being recycled that there won't be quite the same level of demand on it it'll, it'll reach a sort of a bit of an equilibrium <laughs> at least that's my hope <laughs> uh. So yeah, that's been um, that's been getting the uh, what do we call it the the astro science tiers one and two getting the catalogs up and uh, up and made running, and we've actually got we've got some of the memory cards are being spat out here. So we've got 1,500 in in these in these chests waiting to be picked up and recycled. But this isn't going to trigger until there's 40 stacks of them, which is uh, still a sort of seven or so stacks away. We've also got the um, the scrap being picked up from here. I've over overbuilt the station a little bit. We don't have contaminated scrap being produced here yet, or at all. I don't know if there's. I don't know if any layer of, tier of astro science produces contaminated scrap, but it's here in case I need it. So that's astro science. I've also been busy with material science. Um, I've not got quite so far with this one, um, partly because I hadn't made the diagrams, um, and therefore it was a little bit harder to think about. But mostly because it, I just I just ran out of time working on this one, so I'll have a quick run through this as well. So this one works in basically the same way that, that the, it did on the um, when I was building it off off the original bus system. Uh, again, I've used the same sort of basic design to start off with. I've got a, a smattering of um, solar panels and some coolant, and this one doesn't get through anything like as much coolant as the other one did. So these this much smaller array of machines is absolutely fine for it. Then down here, we're making the um, the cold cold data apparently which involves essentially chip so everything everything on the material science involves these um, material science testing packs these sort of orange box things so we make enormous numbers of those and frustratingly they only stack up to oh i'm in the wrong camera mode again <laughs> as always these only stack up to about 10 i think yeah so 10 per stack so they're rather um space consuming you bring in a train full of those and it disappears fairly quickly once onto the bells but then we pull those into these machines it takes up four of those freezes them with a the cold thermofluid and you get some useful data from that and some contaminated scrap which will get spat out onto this belt we then do the same down here but we make plasma and we do we do the same sort of thing we burn them with plasma and again you make a pla um uh, then you get hot thermodynamic data out and, and more contaminated scrap. So these two here, I, I've got those being combined onto a belt system here. That should not be backed up. I'll need to check that one out. Um, so we've got the, the, yeah, this all comes through here. And the data cards will get sorted off onto this belt here, half on each side. And the contaminated scrap gets put onto this belt. And the supply from each half goes onto each side as well. And that runs down here and goes into a station down here. Um, where for some reason, we're not summoning a train, despite that being absolutely full. Um, so this station should set the train limit. Yeah, so the train limit is set to one. Oh, have I not? I've not named it. That's why. So if I name that to scrap pickup, then immediately, yes, this, uh, here, here will come the scrap train, and this will run round and round and round until it's until it's emptied the station, or at least until it's brought it down to um, having less than five thousand of each of the scrap types and less than fifteen thousand of the two fluid, uh, two contaminated 
cosmic cosmic contaminated fluid types. Now the second one is, doesn't, isn't actually relevant here, so that's not that doesn't matter. But um, yeah, so the, the scrap train will come in and take all of that away. Good. I'm glad I was able to solve that. Then we've got a system here that's do it take bringing in the um, iridium ingots and turning them into plates. This is the same as the beryllium one I was talking about before. And then we're feeding those into these various different types of um, mechanical facilities where we're um, stretching steel, I think. Yeah, tensile strength. So we're stretching the steel and somehow that involves a material testing pack as well. I don't know exactly how. And some lubricant as well. And that produces uh, scrap, as, uh, scrap again and contaminated cosmology, yada, yada, yada. And the tensile strength data, which we need. And it spits out a bit of iridium, which I'm hopefully this, yeah, this being passed back up through here. This one does the same, but by squashing concrete to produce compressive strength data. Very, very similar. Spits out a load of scrap. And in exactly the same, we've got, we've got them both feeding out onto the same belt here for it to make it easy to pair, split them off. And then we've got the iridium being fed back around there. The scrap coming out here to be fed back out to the stations. Oh, and look, here we go. We've got the uh, these the cold and hot data starting to come back through again. So that's, that's nice. Then these all get fed down to the computers. We combine the four uh, data types in there with some thermofluid and it produces the orange catalogues, the, uh, the first material catalog, science catalogues. I've got those being fed all the way down here just because that was that's where there was room for a station. <laughs> so they're being let loaded into a station down here where we've got about almost 2,000 of them. So that's ticking over quite nicely. And as you can see, because that train came through and picked up all the contaminated scrap, we've been able to start loading that into these into these chests again. And so this is all flowing nicely. So good, that seems to be working. And we've basically emptied these tanks as well and taken a load off the of that away. And so those, the train, after picking all of that up, brings it over here, dumps it into these chests, where it then goes through these recycling facilities. And I think I'm probably going to need to put some more of this particular stage in, because at the moment I've got I've got all these machines dealing with the actual scrap, but I've only got one um, decontamination facility dealing with the contaminated scrap. So that's getting. I'm going to need to keep an eye on this and make sure this doesn't get too, f or make sure that this this starts going down. At the moment, it's a 1600, which is quite a lot, and there's a load more to be brought from over here. So there's the train filling up again, as we as we just discussed. There's no, oh God, there's about 7,000 in here because of the subtracting. In fact, there's more than that. If that's subtracting 5,000 and we've still got it displaying 7,000, then there's like almost 12,000 in here. So, yeah, there's a lot of a lot of contaminated scrap to cart away from here. So we're going to that train's going to be busy, and then we're going to have to keep an eye on the um, the other end and make sure it's actually dealing with it quickly. Enough. But we'll see how that goes. But in essentially, this is now um, is now working well. Uh, I do need to get on and produce the um, material science too. And that takes more types of data. Uh, so this is from Broad Material Catalog. So for that, we need to do rigidity, pressure containment, corrosion resistance, and impact shielding. And um, there's some interesting stuff in here, like um, needing to make these heavy girders, but that's going to be fairly easy. Pressure containment data, I need to make storage tanks, so that's another thing to do. Corrosion resistance is apparently res corroding glass. I'm not sure that's really a thing. And then impact shielding data, where you have to build actual full-on locomotives. <laughs> On the plus side, each time it runs, it produces 25 data. But even so, it's still making a locomotive for every single time. That's kind of crazy. As someone pointed out on stream, one of the nice things about this is every time you run it, you presumably you're running a tr you're running your locomotive into a heavy girder, and there's only a 50% chance of breaking the girder in that. So sometimes you get to use the girder again. So, so that's nice, I guess. <laughs> But it's going to be fairly heavy on the iridium, and, and we're going to need a load of construction machines to build up the actual locomotives for this. So there's a fair amount to go into this. But I think that's going to be something I'm going to build up um, fairly soon, probably in the next stream. And then we can get that going, and then we'll have two to two, two, two levels of these um, of this of this material science data. We can start, and we can go off and start making um, interesting science out of them all. And we'll see how that goes. <laughs> I think that's quite a good update for what I've been up to. Um, as always, thank you for watching. I hope it's been interesting. Um, oh, here's here's some more material testing packs. As I say, they keep there. There is you get through them at quite a rate. So, oh yeah, one thing I was considering doing with these was instead of bringing them in by train, they're being produced up here in my general producing everything area. I was seriously considering basically taking this entire section and moving it down here to go with the material science so we'd feed in the maybe maybe put it in this gap here so we'd feed in the um, the 
all, all, all the resources would be brought into here. We'd make the material science testing packs and we'd have them available to be shipped out by train. But we'd also have a belt running down through here somehow and feeding straight in here. And that would mean I wouldn't need to build them elsewhere for the sheer, for the huge numbers that are being shipped in here. But I would have them being built here so they can be taken away for... Is it one of the energy sciences? I think it's one of the... Yes, this, this, this energy science requires the material testing packs as well, although in much, much smaller quantities. So I'd, I'd make them on site for the for the material science and then ship them out to here, here from the material science area for the energy science to be made from. And I think that's going to make things a little bit saner and reduce the amount of trains I've got running around. I mean, it, it seems to be okay. This is this is all, all running at the moment, but I just know that this is going to get more and more demand on these as I build up more and more material sciences, especially when I get onto the really high tiers. So there's going to be quite a lot required for that. So that's one of the things I'm considering, and there's a few other things with science to consider, that I'm, but I'm not going to talk about those at the moment. I'm going to bring them up in the next episode, because I think, I, think, I think it's worth um, talking about those in a bit more detail, and here's another, another scrap train coming in. We're up to 4.6 thousand over here now. Jeez. Yeah, I definitely need to keep an eye on it. But that's all to come. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next episode when we're going to be talking science. Yes. <laughs> I'll see you then.